Today's Monday, June the 14th, and today is our first day of vacation Bible school here, so soon the place will be filled up with little kids and all the volunteers and workers be praying for our vacation Bible school this week, if you will, for all of those that are serving in vacation Bible school, for the kids that will be coming. Um, so they'll hear a clear presentation of the gospel and pray for the moms and dads that will be bringing their kids, grandmas, granddads, and especially Thursday night. We have a closing night on Thursday of vacation Bible school. It'll be an opportunity that those parents that are here with unchurched kids uh, uh, and they themselves are unchurched, that they would hear the gospel and be willing to respond to it. So pray, pray, pray this week, if you will. I will be leaving today, heading up to the Southern Baptist Convention. I'll be coming back on Wednesday. and um, so. But I'll be with you tomorrow and Wednesday morning from Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, this morning I just wanted to start off with this, this classic written by Jack Hayford back in early 1981, I think. Don Crow, this is, I believe, your favorite song. Majesty and worship his majesty unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and
morning we're picking up in Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 17. I think Zach had covered 17 and 18 last week. We're going to look at these verses in context. By the way, I just want to thank Zach for filling in for me last week. I had a class last week, a module class. So I was on Zoom all day long. and uh, But I appreciate him stepping up and, and just bringing some great great devotions to us last week. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 17. But first, let me say this. We can kind of look at the book of Ephesians in two halves, if you will. The first half of the book, Paul is laying out some real rich theology of, of who we are in Christ, uh, God saving us, and the result of that salvation. And then in chapters 4, 5, and 6, he gives application, how to live out that theology. You know, theology is so important, and I love studying theology. I love studying about God. I love all the research involved in it, but if it stops there, then it's really not, um, I don't want to say it has no value. It has no value in our lives. Uh, James said not, not to be just a hearer of the Word, but a doer of the Word. So we always look to scripture once we have the interpretation. God, how do I apply this in my life? Because scripture is intended to be applied, it's to be uh, intended to be obeyed, it's intended to be followed by and, and implemented in our lives. And so we pick up at verse 17, Paul says, now I say this and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. You might put it this way. Paul says, hey man, you've been saved. You have been born again and sealed with the Holy Spirit, given the Holy Spirit. Don't continue to live the way that you did because now you have the ability, you have the power not to live that way. Uh, he was writing to Gentiles here, but uh, in, in the futility of their thinking, their empty thinking, their worldly way of thinking, no longer think that way, but, but live... Um, according to the Word of God. It's, it's uh, where Paul says, let the mind of Christ Jesus, the mind that was in Christ Jesus, be in you, in Philippians chapter 4. And so there's a renewing and there's a changing of the mind. I don't know about you, but when I was born again, um, things didn't automatically change in my life. There was a process. But my thinking began to change as I began to read Scripture. I wasn't influenced by a political platform. I wasn't influenced by other writings. My mind was influenced by the Word of God. And it's the Holy Spirit working by the Word of God that our minds change. That's why it's so important for us to be in the Word of God. So he says, don't continue in the futility of your thinking. Verse 18, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. And we too, um, we have to remember that we were darkened in the futility of our thinking. We had a mindset that was the world's mindset. We lived according to the flesh. We lived according to uh, the world standards. Um, and you may say, well, you know, I lived a pretty good life. I didn't do a whole lot. No, you lived a religious life. Uh, you formed maybe your thinking according to what your church culture might have been. But when we're born again, there's a distinctive thinking. And it, listen, the scriptures even cut through what might be traditions of religion or a denomination. And we want to get to the word of God. And what does God have to say? Verse 19, speaking of them again, um, they have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way that you learn Christ. They've given themselves over to that. We all had given ourselves over to that before we were born again. But Paul says, hey, that's not the way you were saved in Christ. That's not the way you learned of Christ. And then he goes on to say in verse 21, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to do this. He says, verse 22, to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life 
and is corrupt with deceitful desires. Our old nature, our old flesh, if you will, our flesh was corrupted by our evil desires. You see, it was the sin within us that, that caused us to live corrupted lives. Our, our thinking was corrupt, our emotions were corrupt, and our will was corrupt because of that old nature. And then he goes on in verse 23 and to say, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So here, here Paul's making a contrast. Don't, don't live according to the flesh the way that you used to live that was driven by the passions of the old nature, that sin nature. But now you have Christ. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the Word of God. You have Christ residing in your spirit. He says, now live according to that. And that plays out in the rest of our Christian life, doesn't it? It's true that when we're born again, uh, that we are given life, but we still contend that old nature is dead, Paul says. It's been crucified with Christ, but we still contend with our flesh, which was patterned by the old nature. Man is typically, is, is essentially made up of three parts. Um, we have our we have our body. That's that's just that this tent that we live in, and we have our soul, which is our mind, our emotions, and our will, and we have our spirit. That spirit that was once dead to God has been now born again, where the spirit of God resides in us, and Christ is seated in our heart. But our flesh, if you will, the way that we pattern our life was formerly patterned after the old sinful nature. And we still have those patterns that we live by before we became believers. They're ingrained in our flesh. But, but Paul explains now that we're to put that off and walk according to the ways of Christ. The best way I can illustrate it is this way, that, that my flesh was conditioned by my old nature, my sin nature. I grew up on a dirt road uh, out in Newton County, rural Newton County, and every it was it was not a gravel road; it was a dirt road. It was red Georgia clay, and every time that it rained, the water would would hit that Georgia clay, and the water would make ruts in the road. And so, as it would dry out, as we were going up the road, you felt every one of those ruts. You'd, you drive up and the, the vehicle blah, 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 across those ruts that have been formed in the road by the water running through that. And once the water had cut a path, the water continued to flow in that path. Well, the county would come out occasionally and they would scrape that old dirt road with their machinery. And all those ruts would be covered over with new dirt and, and it would be smooth for a while until it rained again. And then when the rain would come, the rain would go right back in those old ruts that were there. Well, that's a very similar illustration to the way that, that we live our Christian lives now, or we live our lives. You see, those old habits, those old way of thinking formed ruts in, in our flesh, you might say. And so given the opportunity, every time that we're faced with the temptation to either walk according to the flesh or to walk according to the spirit, the natural tendency is to walk according to the flesh in the same way those ruts have been formed in the road. But now, Paul says, we have a new mind. We've been transformed and we have the spirit of God. And so we have a choice. We have choices, multiple choices every day. Am I going to walk according to the Spirit, or am I going to walk according to the flesh? You see, when we're born again, the flesh is not sanctified. The flesh is not saved. Our spirit is saved, but we still contend with our mind, our emotions, and our will. Here's the way it works. One of you says something ugly or mean to me. My old pattern in my flesh was to respond in the same way. If you said to me, um, Steve, if you said to me, J-Mo, you sure are ugly. My old flesh would have said, well, you're so ugly too. And by the way, your mama is ugly as well. You see, that was my fleshly pattern. I would strike back. But now I have an opportunity to walk according to the Spirit. And the Spirit would say, 
to turn the other cheek when that offense is given. And so rather than responding in the flesh, I may just say nothing and say, you know what, Steve, I may be ugly, but I still love you, right? And so that's the working of the Spirit of God in our hearts. So we can play that out in every instance in life. Are we going to walk according to the flesh or are we going to walk according to the Spirit? You see, um, Paul explains to us in Galatians 5 that there are two ways we can walk, and there are fruits of the flesh and there are fruits of the Spirit. I would encourage you to go and read that today in, in Galatians chapter 5. Also in chapter 8, Paul tells us of Romans, Paul tells us that, that we've been given a new mind, that the old man has been crucified with Christ, but we have to reckon that old nature, that old flesh to be dead. You see, the truth is, all of us can live by the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Now, on this side of heaven, we will never do that to 100%. So if you're trying to, to live out in sinless perfection, you won't. But the good news is, is that those old patterns of our flesh, the more we grow in Christ, the more we reflect on his word and we examine our hearts and we rely on the Holy Spirit to change those things in us, the more we grow, we are sanctified, we are being sanctified, and we grow more in the nature and character of Christ and reflect his heart and his character. Uh, two things are critically important to that in your life and in my life, it, and that is the Word of God, and not just to read the Word of God, but to reflect as a mirror to examine ourselves as we read the Word of God and rely on the Holy Spirit of God to bring about those changes that He would desire to bring about in our lives so that we walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh, that we no longer are driven by, by our futile thoughts as the Gentiles were, as Paul is speaking of here. So the takeaway today is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God. I cannot bring change about in my life. Only the Holy Spirit can by the Word of God. So pray today. God, I want to know you more. God, I, I, want, I want this old patterns of my flesh. Listen, some of those old patterns in our flesh are what are, are wrecking our relationships or have wrecked relationships in the past. Those things God wants to change and renew in us in our lives. We'll pray and ask the Lord for an opportunity today that you'd be able to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart or if a seed has already been planted there, that God would use you to cultivate that seed. And if God, by his grace, would allow us to see somebody, to witness somebody be born again, oh man, wouldn't that be good? Pray and ask the Lord to do that. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he'd keep you. Pray for all of us involved in Vacation Bible School today. I love you. See you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.